2020 has just recently um, joined forces with a company in Sweden, Scambi Diagnostics, and it allows uh, 2020 to offer a new group or a different portfolio in testing. And of course this is with molecular testing, so we'll be able to offer a broader range of tests in biodiagnostics, so we're very, very excited about that. And um, it's a, a partnership, as I say, and the new company is going to be called Lynx Diagnostics. And so this season, under a new ISO laboratory standard of 17025, we'll be offering um, a higher level of testing. I suppose both, but more than anything, seed companies. So we'll be able to offer a little bit more to seed companies in terms of the molecular work for variety testing, hybridity, and that type of thing. But we're very excited to um, host the bigger workshop for the International Seed Testing Organization this fall. I think it's the first time we've had such a workshop in Canada and uh, we're um, inviting 25 people and so far we've got a number of people from all over the world and as well as people in Canada and um, it's going to allow us to look at new tests that are on the horizon bring analysts closer together in terms of how we understand the results in the testing and it's going to be led by three very well-known um, people in the industry. Uh, Dr. Alison Powell, who comes from the University of Aberdeen in Scotland. Uh, Stan Matthews, who also has been working with Vigor for a very long time. And then closer to home, Dr. Bob Elliott from Saskatoon. And um, very, very good work that they've all contributed uh, to canola as well as corn and soya bean and um, as I say it's in, in September in the fall and we still have a number of uh, openings I think we've got about four places left if anybody's interested in registering and currently in Canada we are uh, lucky enough to have registrants from the um, Canadian Sea Growers Association, uh, private researchers and, all, and a number of seed analysts who would find it very very It's a little bit early to tell because um, usually the quality of seed is mostly impacted um, during the time that it's being harvested or just in that time period that's leading up to harvest. Everything um, on our side in Western Canada looks very, very good. Manitoba is early, Alberta's right on target, I believe Saskatchewan has some good product as well too. Um, I think the big thing that um, is impacting the quality of crops at the moment are the insect pressure and um, that's always a concern um, because it can affect germination ultimately. So I am hearing on tweet that um, there's some midge uh, pressure and of course we're seeing some aster yellow as well which is uh, a little bit of a problem in canola but usually uh, we start to see the true impact of, of quality and how it's affected generally just after September when it's been harvested. Well, as far as fusarium testing goes um, it's one of those tests that in, in Alberta particularly ha is, is something that's mandatory or at least we have to test um, on a compulsory basis and so far I think the program has gone quite well and there's a good um, uptake with uh, the seed cleaning plants to, to test for fusarium and um, it is still very much a, an issue it's very um, problematic depending on the type of year that we're having uh, last year our numbers were actually down in terms of positives but um, this year particularly with the high humidity um, we could essentially you know see see some issues again with it 
Um, but there's good work being done towards finding resistant varieties. I believe that there are resistant or tolerant varieties on the market already. Um, as far as the testing goes, um, we would want to obviously offer the two tests that we have, the DNA based test which is quite quick, um, it allows us to get results to a customer in a couple of days and um, then there's the plate test that has been well adopted um, with other industry um, analysts who are you know, testing for things there in Club Root. Um, we test quite a lot, I think um, we're probably one of the labs that does most of the uh, club route, so we'd have a pretty good idea of um, what the pressure is like for, for the problem. Um, where we are, we're actually in one of the counties that's most heavily um, infected or infested. And um, we've just started early testing because uh, the soil samples are just coming in now uh, with the, you know, the canola's there. And um, we haven't seen too much. However, uh, again, when it's wet and if there's a, a lot of water, free running water around, um, club root can become an issue. And um, I don't have any numbers, but I can certainly get those for Actually, that's a topic that's very dear to my heart because I've just actually this lunchtime been talking about that. I think we have a lot of work to do in educating um, the end user with C. And whether that's uh, done through um, magazines, articles, that type of thing, social networking, um, whatever that may be, um, some of the most important questions that, that we get throughout the season are, um, you know, how is a germination conducted, what does a germination actually mean, um, same with figure, that type of thing. I think the, the end message that we want to get to the consumer is that the work that's been done has been done to an accredited standard and a, and a respected and um, valuable um, you know, test has been done overall. And I think there's lots and lots of topics, not just germination and vigor, but there's lots of topics that I would like to cover. And I, I don't know how best we do it, but I think it's something that we absolutely have to be really um, cognizant of because every season there's always something and that's one of the beauties of this particular industry is that there's always something challenging, there's always something new on the horizon and I think it's important that we get those messages out. Whether it, I think Twitter right now is, is huge and I think that's something if we can um, speak freely about um, information that's one of the ways that we can do it and I think um, you know large seed companies that are selling seed I think go a long way in terms of offering um, good products and do a lot to to get that message out through through you know, those products speak for themselves I think seed testing is very, very important in, um, in, the, in the seed trade. And the fact that we're an internationally recognized lab in that uh, we now have International Seed Testing Association uh, accreditation, uh, we do get involved quite a bit more on a broader basis. And I, I realize I just read in the trade winds that um, low level presence um, genetically modified products that are issues going to Europe and so just on a basic basic level um, we've increased the amount of seed that we actually test going over um, into Europe so that um, if we're just looking on a physical purity basis we're looking for things like alfalfa or brassica that both have genetically modified um, products um, on a different level, um, as I was saying earlier, we've um, joined with a company out of Sweden um, who are, are quite well known in North America um, and they are
our scan and diagnostics, and they, they're allowing us to be able to offer uh, molecular testing for low-level presence. So we've already been doing retrofit tests and, and that type of thing, but um, we have been hampered a little bit in that we've not been able to test abroad because we haven't had the uh, lab ISO component or the expertise. So. Um, I think the way that uh, 2020C Labs can grow is by partnering with someone who already has this expertise and will be that, that arm in Canada. So seed testing, yes, does play a very important role in the low-level presence of genetic